Can you just lift up your right hand and worship God Almighty? When you come to church, the secret in tapping into what God wants to do is in the extent to which you come to Him. The Bible says, draw near to me. When you draw closer, you have to speak of His goodness. Whatever word God is bringing to you, like God, you are good. You have been merciful to me. You have been a God that has helped me. I want to trust you much, much more. Just say those words, a few words of worship. That's the secret. When you say, I went to pray, it should be indeed validated by what you spoke to him and what he spoke to you. And that's the secret. That's where connection happens. Father, we come as those that have known you. You have been our God. We have seen you. We have seen your hand. We have seen your presence. We have seen what you can do. We have compared it with what man can do. And we have found out that there is none like you. We have found out that you cannot fail because you fight for us. Mighty man of war, Lion of Judah, we bow down, we bow down and wash Say Yahweh, 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 come and do what only you mighty man of war, mighty man of war, light your Lord Jesus. Say we bow down, we bow down and worship you, Yahweh, 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 oh, come and do what only you can do. Destiny changer, you are the destiny Come and change, come and change my destiny, my destiny today. Come and change my destiny, my destiny today. Destiny changer, destiny changer. You are the destiny changer. Come and change my destiny. Worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving in. I worship you. I worship you. I worship. Say you are here. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. One more time, you are here. You are here. Moving in our midst. I worship. 
worship you. I was saying, way maker, Lord, way maker, miracle one, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that's who you are. In the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. When you make a promise, you deliver. And a promise in this season that you are behind us in our battles. To resist the enemy for any battle that has been prepared against our destinies and it's not yet manifested, you will fight the battle for us. Yet, as we fold our arms and be still and know that you are God, that's your position. Your position does not change. When our status changes, you remain the same. So we hold on to the confession that you are king, that you are Lord and master. So Holy Spirit, help me to communicate this truth, the mystery that is embedded in the truth of warfare. You have not left us alone. You are behind us. You are for us. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Give God a mighty hand clap. I want to speak on spiritual warfare, the battle of resistance. And we read 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 to 10. It's a very well-known scripture but let me begin by saying this, that we declare this month as a month of spiritual warfare. And each time you say it, you declare it, each time we assert that truth that God is a fighter, he will come and fight for you. I want you to know that. Okay, it doesn't matter. If you lost a battle, check very well that your involvement of God and the things you now know, the things you now understand, analyze them and compare with what I'm going to show you now. Praise the Lord. Amen. And why the month of spiritual warfare? It's because we want to expose the kingdom of darkness by equipping you with knowledge. Every time you see knowledge in the Bible, you see that what follows with a people that does not know, that don't know a particular spiritual truth is defeat. Let me say it again. Of course, the Bible says that my people die. Not that they are in ICU. They die because of lack of food, Economic problems? No. no. The word of God said they die due to lack of knowledge. In other words, that's what separates a weak person and a stronger one. The manifestation of you outside, that's the determining factor. Knowledge. Do you know? So we expose these truths so that you may know what to do when the day of battle comes, you may be equipped. Somebody say amen. amen. So that you are able to stand. So what God is doing in the last days is to equip us with these truths. And equipping is that you might go for battle. They don't equip people that are not ready to fight. So Psalm 144 said, 
This is David, Psalm 144, verse 1. Said, praise be to the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle. Can you just lift up your fingers, your hands, and say, these fingers receive training. You know, this is an image that God is trying to communicate to us. And I'm going to show you very soon. But the mystery is that on the other hand, there is Satan who doesn't want you to be equipped at all. He doesn't want. That's one of the things Satan hates is equipment that a believer now knows the truth. He can now stand on their own and fight spiritual battles. Satan doesn't want that. Why? Because in the day when battle shows up, he wants you to be powerless. Yeah. He wants you to be powerless. He wants you to be useless. You cannot do anything. You only know what you learned from the university. You know, you know you how to analyze. You know the other thing. When it comes to things you cannot understand, you don't know. That's what Satan is looking for. Because without any weapon, it's impossible to fight. Praise the Lord. Yet, the Bible has taken time to describe this as a struggle. And listen to me very carefully. If you came with your ears, please lend them to me. You know how, that's what teachers would say. Say, lend me your ears. I don't know whether, <laughs> what they meant is give me attention. That every battle you see is described as a struggle. And that's what there is when we put up this series. It's a struggle. And our calling as a believer is to resist the enemy. That's why Peter said, resist him standing firm in the faith, not in your intellectual, analytical. No, 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 no. If that's where you are standing now, your head, you are standing on your wisdom, you cannot fight this kind of battle. You can't. It's impossible. And so Peter said, resist him in the faith. Standing firm in the faith. To resist means to fight against something that is attacking you. That's what it is. To resist is to withstand. To remain strong against a force. And to resist, you need equipment. You need tools. You need, you need to be equipped with what it is to resist. If, you, if somebody loses their ring... In a sea, for example, a ring has dropped in Lake Victoria. And a man who wants the ring has said, whoever gets my ring, I love it so much. I bought it from Dubai. I want people to go under the sea, get the ring for me, and I'll give them $2 million. Huh? And then five men jump into the sea. Oh, they need the money. Remember, so dead down there, so deep, confused, plants are there. And they begin to lose, to use their eyes, ordinarily, looking for a ring. But remember, no oxygen. They have to come up, get oxygen, and go back. And then the man equips some people, gives them life jackets, gives them oxygen, gives them the whole attire to look for the ring, and sends them down. They go in, they even give them magnifiers with light. That the moment they locate there is not a problem to get. Who do you think will get the two million dollars? Huh? The one that has been equipped. This one goes down, comes back. Have you found it? No, no, no I just came to breathe. Hey, no, goes back. You see? So what God is doing is to equip you. When we run this series, it's not, let's just go because I have to go to church. No, it's to help you. The God you worship is relevant in every other area. That's the season that we are in. To be equipped is to have what it takes to go down and come up with solutions. Somebody say amen. And so this is what is happening now. You need equipment to resist. You see, 
There is more in the realm of the spirit than you are able to see in the physical. There is much more. And I will show it to you very soon. And the more you and I relate more in the physical and ignore the other part, that's why you face a lot of damages in your life. That's the source. Let me show you a scripture that the Lord gave me this morning. First Kings chapter 22, verse 19 to 22. This is a place where there was a prophet. He was seeing what was happening in the realm of the spirit. First Kings chapter 22. And there's a meeting that was going on in heaven and he describes the whole scenery that was happening there. And this is what it is. Please put it up so they can follow. So then Micah, Micah said, that's a prophet. Therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne with all the hosts of heaven. So this is, you know, God, the cherubim and everything. The presence of God is there. And he said, with all the hosts of heaven, standing beside him to the right and to the left of him. The next verse. And the Lord said, who will entice Ahab? Ahab is a king, a political king. Meanwhile, Ahab doesn't know what is happening. But they are discussing what is supposed to happen. Look at it. Who will entice Ahab so that he may go up and fall? That's they mean death. They have just used the word in image. They mean, if you look, check other translations, it is actually where he's going to die. He is going to go fight, but he will not come back. You see it there. At Ramoth Gilead, then one said one thing and another said another. But the next verse is a surprise. The Bible says, a spirit came forward. So you see like in a board meeting, you have gathered all your staff. You are, I mean, you know, the board, you know, the, the, the people that are in your organization, they are deciding, making decisions. And you are in that serious, then somebody came up. And you don't know at what, how they are speaking, what is driving their motivations. Put back the scripture. And the Bible says, and the spirit came up. And the Bible says, what did the spirit say? Say, I will entice him. That's the spirit. He said, the Lord asked, he said, how will you do it? He said, I will go out and be a deceiving spirit. Some versions say a lying spirit in the mouth of his prophets. So that when they come, the prophets will speak lies to him. And then he will believe. So when he goes, he will die there. They are discussing something, but it has not yet manifested on earth. By the time they execute it, you that has been sleeping, you think everything is fine. I am going to work and come back. Everything is fine. You don't know. This is what it means to be able to stand and to be registered so that when you are a man that understands that the spiritual realm is much more, there is much more to know there than in the physical. Your head now will look clear. You will no longer be saying things anyhow you will stick and stand firm. You will avoid certain discussions. You will try and please God because that's where things are being cooked. They have, he doesn't have a contribution to make. Did they say, now go and ask him what we should do so we want to save him? No. And if you check that story, read it when you get home, everything happened as it did. But let's move on. So this world would probably be better if all these forces we are talking about were in agreement. But there is one third of the angels that fell, that came down just to cause harm, just to cause you and, I, and your husband to be quarreling. That's their job. That one third of angels, fallen angels, they came in just to cause you and your siblings to be fighting. That's all. <laughs> and by the time you wake up this is the same person you grew up with you're beginning to wonder and, and Paul said for we struggle not against flesh and blood but against what? principalities, rulers 
And these are the ranks that we are talking about here. And their nature is to fight against the purposes of God. Their nature is to fight against destinies. Their nature is to oppose what God is doing in your life. That's all. That's the assignment. And what they do is to work for Satan to fulfill the agenda that Satan wants here on earth and the will of God is not happening. That's why you must resist. Lift up your hand and say, Lord, the equipment I need this month to resist, give it unto me. So you desire to have a good marriage. You, want, you really want to have a good marriage. You desire to do business and be succeeded, uh, succeeding. You desire to raise your children. All my children should be raised in the fear of the Lord. All of a sudden, you see that it's not happening like that. What's the problem? I mean, everywhere things are tough. There's a lot of resistance in terms of your progress. That resistance is what we call spiritual warfare. The problem is that for you, you have restricted your understanding only in the physical realm. So there are certain things you don't understand of the other side. I'm going to mention about three things. Number one is that when we talk about spiritual warfare, we are dealing with principalities, and please write it. If you are online, please listen to this message. You can, you can cut it out, a section, and be listening. We are talking about principalities. We are talking about rulers and authorities. And these are ranks of demonic powers. And the mystery about spiritual warfare is this, and listen, it will help you to understand why some of you, uh, you think that God is the one that lost the battle. You think that, ah, why should I even pray? This is the mystery. Sometimes it's when you begin to pray that you begin to see the manifestation of your battle increasing. How many of you have experienced that? You pray, you begin to pray, and then instead of, then you begin to see that all the other things that were not there come up, the problems multiply. How many of you have experienced that? Put up your hand, put up your hand. You see, I thought that by praying, Lord, I have been praying, fasting, but you see the attacks increasing. It's not surprising. Let me show it to you what happens. And what you should now do. Exodus chapter 5. If you have read the story, from chapter 4, Moses has come. And his assignment is to bring these 3 million people out of Egypt and then take them to the promised land. Of course, he came with a story, God has called me, let's go. What he didn't tell them is that there's going to be wilderness before we get there. He didn't. That part... That part, he did not explain it very well. So they arrived at the wilderness, and they say, what is this? I, 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 let's go back to Egypt. There are certain things that are going to come to you. God doesn't have to tell you. For, look, any promotion in the spirit realm, there must be wilderness in the middle. There must be a, a, a season of difficulties before you arrive at it. Get to know this. So he came and he's telling Pharaoh, let's go, release my people. Pharaoh even challenged him and said, who is the Lord that I should obey him? I thought this is the man of God, the power of God is there. Pharaoh should say, ah, please, I have given up. No. Do you know what Pharaoh did? He increased the oppression more. This is the plea. Moses is saying, let's go. And then Pharaoh said, okay, I've been giving you straw to make bricks to build my city. Now you have to look for the straw by yourself. And the elders came to Moses, since you came, sir, since you came, we are even suffering the more. What is this? Why didn't you remain in that place? You say, God has called me. Since you arrived in this, since we began to pray, that nothing has changed. In fact, things have increased. All the money we have lost for our business is collapsing. Since we began to do this thing of prayer and fasting of you, see, all the, look at what is happening. What's, what's this? And that's why some of you, when you reach that point, you think God is the problem now. 
you now think it's time now to just do whatever I want to do. But it's a mystery. But listen, it's at that point that your breakthrough is nearer. Somebody say hallelujah. It's at that point. That's why you see that the enemy will react each time you launch a season of prayer, each time you hunger for the things of God, each time you want to really pray, prayer and fasting, you gather fellowship. That's when he's going to react. This is what happens. Because the point of your breakthrough is the breaking point. Somebody say hallelujah. And that's what Moses did. What should you do at that point? At that time, step up the prayer. At that moment, step up the efforts. At that moment, when things are tough, step up the prayer. And that's what Moses did. He stepped up. He should have said, let me go back. Pharaoh has refused. God, since he has refused, let me go. So you will have no chapter 6, no chapter 7, nothing. And so listen, when you launch a season of prayer, expect war because warfare is war. Help me and tap your nose, a neighbor. Find your nose, a neighbor. Did you know that warfare is war? So why are you expecting a change? It's war. And in war, there is an exchange. There's an exchange. Because this man, this devil you are fighting, that's how he started. He started in the context of war, fighting. Let me show it to you. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 to 9. The Bible says that war broke out where? In heaven. And Michael, this is, this is uh, the minister of defense in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon dragon. Do you know the reaction? What's the reaction? The dragon and his angels did what? Fought back. There was no round table discussion. You know, we are in Serena. There's water. Jewish says, we are discussing how to bring peace in a DRC. You are in Serena meanwhile. There was nothing like that. There was nothing like, let's come together. You know, there was no, so God didn't say, devil, you know, you don't have to do this. Michael, why are you fighting your friend? We should, the Bible says we should forgive each other. So God should have now said, you know, you don't have to fight. No, you come. What is it that you want? You know, um, that uh, some part of the parts of heaven I should control. Okay, let's go for discussion. You know, he's not good. You know, have these ones you should be controlling. That's not what God did. What happened? The Bible says that when he fought back, there was no place for him to stay in heaven. And he was howled down to the earth. And since then, he has been operating. Peter actually said, be sober-minded because his job is to go and look for everyone. And that anyone, let it not be you. Because he's looking for someone. Looking means you are searching. Is there anyone here who is doing this? Okay, this one is praying. Leave that one. Okay, I see. Ah, okay, I see a man. He has given his heart to sexual immorality. Now he will summon all the demons. Go and get that. That's our partner. Go and get him. In fact, disorganize the whole marriage. Bring chaos there and bring that man. I need him. That's what has been happening in most families. The demons will go back and report and say, I see another man, he has uh, opened his business to wicked covenants. They will say, come on, go there, collect all the, we need that man, we need to make a covenant. When you are praying, say, Lord, what is this? Oh my God. God is bad. God is not bad. You are the one that took to someone who has been looking for someone, and that someone has been you. He has now found you. This is the mystery. You need to understand how things operate. So he fought back. This word, how down, what it means is that when you see a plane falling into the water, it was not a matter of uh, agreeing how he should fall. 
was forced out of heaven. That's the beginning of warfare. Lift up your hand and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, anytime he's looking for someone, anytime he's looking for a marriage, let it not be my marriage. Say, I close the door of my life, of my destiny to any demonic visitation in the name of Jesus. But I want you to know there's going to be a reaction. That's why we are teaching you about warfare. And you see that this is a pattern even in the New Testament when you read. The pattern in the Gospels and the book of Acts is that whenever Jesus appears in the Gospels, for example, in a situation there is the move of the Holy Spirit, things are happening, you see a reaction from the kingdom of darkness. You see the devils reacting. Mark chapter 1. Jesus was teaching at a synagogue in Capernaum. And the people were surprised at his teaching because the Bible says he was teaching with authority. And because they knew him and all this. And then, as he was teaching, all of a sudden, verse 23 reports a reaction. The Bible says, just then, a man in the synagogue who was possessed by an impure spirit cried out. He said, what do you want with us? Jesus of Nazareth, have you come to destroy us? Because that's what they are expecting. They expect you to release the word that destroys them. So they know, they expected destruction. If you watch them mess up your marriage, if you watch them mess up your life, if you watch them mess up your family, they will succeed, but your job is to destroy them. Already there is a reaction. Jesus shut his mouth, healed, cast out that thing out of his life, and the boy became well. The person became well. Each time there is this, there is a reaction. So don't be surprised if you are praying, if you are doing all this, it's a battle. But God, this God we are serving, has enough resources to fight for you. Somebody say amen. Amen. I told the services before that I have proven this God. And each time I want to see the manifestation of the Almighty God, I will go back to what He has done before. Because He has a track record of keeping His promises. Somebody say, Amen. Let me give you an example. If you go to the hospital, you have an issue, they need to operate on you. And then they bring one intern, eh? medical intern. They say, this one graduated yesterday from my career, um, no, last month, and then uh, he has been operating on people. He is born again, he's a good man. So last time he operated, actually, that person died, you know? And uh, then um, there was a time, actually, even the other one, there was, it was a baby, you know, the baby also passed on. So, how many of you will go to be operated by the guy? Put up your hand. Eh? You will go. But he's born again. They'll say, he's born again. You will not go. Okay, you are traveling, and they say, ah, you know, that plane, wow. The pilot has 4,000 kilometers, hours on him, you know, hours, 4,000. It's very good. But it's it's only one little problem. Every time he gets a plane, he crash landing, you know, and uh, it's just that by the mercies of God, he has not died, but, you know, he's, he's just, it's a small thing, don't mind, you know. But last time, he, they plunged into Lake Victoria, so how many of you will enter into the plane? But God, how is it that we can base our faith to fight for us is because of his reputation. The God you worship has a reputation to keep you from all harm. That's why the Bible says he's the ever-present helper in times of trouble. When trouble shows up, when you have a trouble, bring it to God and say, Lord, I have come with every kind of trouble to present it to you. He has a reputation This is what he has been doing. 
Somebody shout hallelujah. This is the secret. And in this battle, when we talk about resistance, we are not fighting alone. We are not working alone. We are not left helpless to resist. There are even angels that are deployed on assignment to fight and get the job done for you. Matthew chapter 26, verse 53. Look at what Jesus taught us. They came to arrest him. And when they came, he asked them a, a, a question. He said, do you think that I cannot appeal to my father and he will at once help me to tap your neighbor say, neighbor, at once. Jesus said, at once. Put back the scripture. He said, do you think I cannot appeal to my father and he will at once send me more than 12 legions of angels? In case you don't know, he was using the illustration of the Roman army to describe the heavenly army. Because a legion is 6,000. But now he's talking about 12 regions. So they came with a hundred soldiers, band of soldiers, and then he's telling them, I can call forth more than 12 legions. Because if you are commanding 6,000, and then Jesus said, I can, there is much more. So think about 12 of 6,000, that's 72,000 angels. That's what he was talking about, more than that. So God has enough resources to shield you, to fight for you. We are not working alone. I told a testimony. I was seated in my office one day. Always take note of the prayers at the seasons. When you are fasting, you are praying. Take note of those moments. See what is happening around you. Your dreams, your visions, record those things. So as I sat, my eyes went dim, fell into a trance, and I saw three armed men, three, with guns. They entered the office. They opened, actually. They opened and entered. One of them came, stood behind me. That's how you see, like how you see bodyguards guarding their boss. Another one stood at the door. One came and stood at a corner. And they were all holding guns. And there was a presence in that place. This is an office. And all of a sudden, they, 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 this ear picked up something and said, this is how I protect you. And then all of a sudden, ah, no soldier at all. I wanted those people to guard me. It was so beautiful and feeling a kind of presence there. I went out. I opened the door. I said, did you see any? Some soldiers came here. He said, Reverend, go back and sit. There is no soldier. He said, no. Let me look. Maybe they have gone. You didn't see them. This is how much resource God has. In the same week, and you see, it means something was going to happen to me in that season. One of our staff had a, a vision. And she came around and said, no, Reverend, I had a vision. What was in the vision? He said, an ego. An ego came and rested on you. Both parts of your neck and then he spread its wings. And then a voice told the person that said, this is how I protect my servants. If you don't understand the image of an ego, one of the words that are used when God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, the Bible says he carried them where? Lift up your hand and say, we are not working alone. Okay, so if you come to me anyhow, I move with a host. They are following me behind. They are following me in front. They are everywhere deployed. When I switch off the engine, they also stop at the supermarket. Some are waiting for me. Some go inside with me. I come out, enter. They are continuing their journey. 
and for you. Oh, God doesn't care. Who told you? If God were to open your eyes, you would stand firm. Because that's what Peter is saying on the faith. Instead of lamenting, oh my God, things are not happening. When it comes to warfare, he has resources. And let me show you, Mark chapter 5, Jesus met a man to show you that the devil that people are running after, he does not have anything. Jesus met a man. The Bible says he had 6,000 demons, just one man. So can you imagine to make one man mad? The devil put in that man 6,000 demons. Legion. Because Jesus asked to say, my name is Legion. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, how many angels do you think God can afford? If the devil can manage 6,000 demons. <laughs> Why angelic ministry? Because Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14, the Bible says, are they not all angels? Are they not ministering spirits? To serve those that will inherit salvation. You cannot worship an angel, but every time God releases an answer, the actual execution on the ground is done by angels. We have had services here. Deliverance hour. When a prayer is going on, you see people say, the time you began to pray, a hand touched this angle and another one here and my back is completely healed. Here, in this church. As recent as Tuesday, we had such experiences here. Angelic ministry. So those of you, we call you for special ministries, I mean special services, things are happening and you say, me, I will be sleeping. You'll be sleeping at home. Meanwhile, others are coming to get what God is able to do. Somebody say amen. Number two, when you talk about spiritual warfare, it's a battle you fight when you are armed. You have to be armed. If you are not armed, you will be harmed. Help me tap your neighbor. neighbor. If you are not armed, you will be harmed. That's why many of you are in that state. You are limping spiritually because you now think that this is just some, you know, and when you enter ministry like that, for example, to serve at the altar, you are harmed. The harm is much more because the devil can locate you. You are naked, no weapon. Shoot him at first sight. He commands, he says, one demon comes against you, you are collapsed. You say God is the one that is bad. No, you went to Somalia to fight Al-Shabaab when you don't know what you are doing. They have never even trained you. Instead of pointing the gun this way, you point it this way, you shoot yourself. You are in Somalia. That's why Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13 said, therefore put on the full armor of, of God, that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. That day of evil can be a day when I will not be around, so don't call me. That day of evil, when it comes, you call me, I will be on leave. That day of evil, when your husband turns into something else, that day you call one of the priests, they will be on leave. It's you to fight. It's you to fight. It's you to fight. And that's what Joseph did. In Genesis chapter 39, Potiphar's wife kept coming to him. One day, he forced, she forced him, but Joseph ran out. I told the area services that Joseph must have read 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22. You know what it says? It says, flee the evil desires of your youth and pursue righteousness. He said, I have to become what God wants me to become. If you are a, a, a young lady, can you put up your hand? Young lady, you are not married. Just put up your hand. Not children. I say, young lady, if you are a child, bring your hand down. Young lady, you want to get married, put up your hand. And say, I must become what God wants me to become in the name of Jesus. Lastly, lastly, lastly. When you talk about spiritual warfare, it's a battle that you fight by the power of the word of God. Don't forget this. 
By the power of the word of God. That's how you fight it. That's why when you meet demonic powers during deliverance, speak the word. That word has power. And it's part of spiritual resistance because they cannot stay where the word is in operation. They can't. You address them by what they are doing. Because the battle of life is the battle of words. You need to understand this. You need to understand. If you lose the battle of words, you also lose the battle of words. Lose the battle of words, you lose the battle of life. I mean. So one man was contracted in Numbers chapter 22, verse 6, to curse the children of Israel. You know the story. They invited him. And they said, curse these people for me. Since they are too mighty for me, they are too strong. If they are too mighty, why don't you gather all the weapons, all the chariots, all the horses, and fight against them? He said, no, that's not the strategy. He said, curse them for me. Why is he interested in releasing a word, a curse? Because the power of words is stronger. That's why some of you, the things they spoke over your head, they are still operating in your life, if you check right now. Yeah. They are operating exactly as they say it. I wanted to bring a lady. She's a police officer. Because I called her and said, do you want... She has been sending me testimonies. And on the day the mother died, she said, uh, the mother said, oh, my car says everything they said about me that are bad. I release them to you. Yes. And some of you are operating under those things. So when she launched into prayer, went home, the aunties, they are now the ones that told her. And indeed, if you check, nothing was happening. She said, as you see me here, this is what has been happening. We prayed after the prayer, including fasting. When I say the devil doesn't want you to be equipped, when she decides to fast, one day if I'm going to bring her in a Sunday service, because some of you don't come for those services where we have time, but I'll bring her on a Sunday service to give you testimony. When she decides to fast, Headache, immediately, headache. Immediately. This is the same, like you decide at six, you eat breakfast at eight, but headache. So, in other words, headache comes. When is that now no longer fasting? Headache stops. That day I told her, from here, go and fast. She fasted. The next day, went. She said, nothing happened. I said, nothing will happen. The next day, went. For one week, she said, I enjoy it now. I want to fast. But the day she was concluding the fast, she was being driven. This is the, I'll bring her. She's not a small person in the, somewhere else. A, a spirit being like darkness moved ahead of her car. And the driver went like this, went the other. This is why some of you, the, certain things that are happening to you now. And then she mentioned Jesus. That's when the guy came back to his seat. He said, what did you see? He said, I saw something moving. It's part of the battle. I told you, when the devil was fought, he fought back. But he will not succeed in your life in the name of Jesus. Okay, as I speak now, all those things that were happening, they were cut off from that very moment. Why is this guy interested in a curse? Because this is how you release demonic powers. The same way they come, meanwhile, you can also overturn them by the power of the word of God. And that's why Ezekiel was told to eat the scroll. He said, son of man, eat the scroll. And then after you have eaten, go now and speak to the, child, to the children of Israel. After you have eaten, it's empowerment. It's empowerment. That's what strengthens you. For you, you are a man, you are going after every, you know, your wife has to struggle, look through your phone to ask you who sent this kind of message. You have a problem. You need, to, you need to change your diet. I don't know whether you got me. You think you need to change from Matoke. That's not what I'm talking about. Eat what is offered to you. God is talking about the scroll, the word. He told Ezekiel, is that menu of yours. When you go to YouTube, you look at those things. There's an app called Phonics. I tried to ask my wife to remove it from my phone. She said, you know, it cannot be removed. Uh, but it's a, it's a very good app. 
I know most of you have it here. But the moment you click on a document, it will open for If you want to go by, it will bring pornography immediately. How many of you are witnesses to this? Yes, I have witnesses. Immediately, you see pornography. Ah, this is not what I... As some of you go there, go those, to those sites, you are a man, you are now seeing those things. That's what you are eating now. You consume the, That's No wonder when you are, what you are manifesting out there is because of what you have been eating. Lift up your hand and say, Father, I change my menu. The deposit of the word is what is going to strengthen you to resist. Even these children that you have put in school, they are watching. Watch them. Take their phones. Withdraw all the phones from children, my friend. I don't allow it when they come for confirmation. They say, ah, they bought, they bought me for me a phone. I told them the day you arrive with the phone, after I've told you, I sell the phone, give the money to SCP. Yeah. I need some parents, the rose, I guess, say, Yo, do you want me? Because I can do it. I sell your phone right now because the rules you sign to them. Sell the phone, give the money to SCP. What are you doing with the phone? You are just a young, a young child. You don't, you don't need a phone. Buy them this, what do you call it? Huh? Buy them that one. When you reach 21, we can now buy for you a phone. Giving a phone, a young child. Did you have a phone at that age? Okay, everybody stand up on your feet. We're going to pray now. Please take the glory. I'm satisfied just to see you glorified. Take the stage, Lord, and have your way. I'm just a vessel and nothing more when you're done. When you're done, blessing your people, please take the glory. I'm satisfied just to see you glorified. There are fights you are fighting. And some of you, you have fought a battle and you don't have the power to resist the devil. Run to the altar here. You are fighting a battle, but the battle is so hard. You don't have the strength. You are about to give up. Just run to the altar here. I'm going to pray. And when I pray, that will be the end of that battle because something's going to come upon you. There is heavy equipment that heaven has given. As I'm speaking, you come. There's another category. For you, it's just you are a businessman and you lent money to some people. And they have never paid you. Just come to the altar here. You don't need the permission of many. Just come, run to the altar. Because what is going to happen to you? You see, church is not just come, I went and then I saw the referee. How they are that the prophet has traveled. No, we, we, we are not doing any kind of tradition here. When you come here, lift up your voice and cry to God. Say, God, I have heard that you have a reputation of not losing battles. You are a fighter. That's what I've heard. Tell him that, Lord, I am moving out of this particular church today with the word that you will fight for me because I hear, I hear that you are in charge of battles. There is heavenly equipment there is a person that was not able to resist the devil. God is now clothing you with the heavenly equipment right now. I see that cloth over you. That cloth represents power. The Bible says, Psalm 62, that once have I spoken, twice I have heard that power belongs to God. And that power is meant to help you to resist those forces, to resist those particular things you have been facing. 
and it's going to happen from here. Those ones that they lent money to people, we're going to pray that the angelic visitation and help will go forth. Those people will call you to say, I want to pay you back your money. I am very sorry for doing this. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, let them receive what it takes to resist the devil. Lord, do a divine prescription here. Prescribe for these children that have come in front a particular capsule. Some of you are receiving that wind. The wind of the Spirit of God to help you to resist. To help you to quote the word of God. Your prayer life changes right away. You will have the grace to fast. You will have the grace to employ efforts to deal with Satan and all the forces. Thank you, Lord. Rapo kariba sikia brakato la magea boda ribrika tama suyanga masopri kanda masula brakata malike yaba Zaposa karati yaba The glory of God is already here. Yes, yes, yes. The glory of God Almighty, the King of Kings, the fighter, the one who said, is there anything too hard for the Lord? That's the kind of person you worship. He's here. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we put to an end every battle in the name of Jesus you promoter of suffering, you promoter of demonic visitation, you promoter, you foul spirit, assign against that family, assign against that person, catch fire now! In the name of Jesus, let the heavenly deployment happen. Yes, 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 yes. Do I have ministers? Do I have ministers? Let the heavenly deployment happen. Let every problem that has been manufactured from hell be cut off right away. In the name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. We break the power. We break the power of demonic visitation over your life now. In the name of Jesus, lose your hold now. The fire of God. Take that child out of that lady. Get the child. The fire of the Lord comes upon you to strengthen you. Receive the might. Receive the might. Receive the power to live well. Receive the power planted in you. I silence the Pharaoh spirit. I silence Pharaoh that has cut you off from your destiny. I silence Pharaoh that has cut you off from good things. I silence Pharaoh that has cut you off from marriage. I silence Pharaoh. I silence Pharaoh that has cut you off from marriage. In the name of Jesus Christ, I cut off the spirit of Pharaoh right now. Lose your hold now. Lose your hold. Lose your hold. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. We cut off Pharaoh now. You strong man that has been holding this your children for a long time. Enough is enough. Catch fire now! Catch fire! We break every covenant they put you into. We break every tie they tied you to. We break every rope that they tied to. Every anti-progress rope. We cut you off now in the name of Jesus. Cut you off. 
And we bring the blood of Jesus now to speak better things for you, my friend. We bring the blood of Jesus to speak you into alignment in the name of Jesus. Don't worry. The blood of Jesus is doing the work. That blood speaks better things. So they spoke a curse. After they had spoken a curse, we can now reverse it. That's what we are doing now. We stop the operation of Satan over your destiny. We stop the operation of demonic forces over your destiny. In the name of Jesus. And if you are sick, if you are sick, the sickness goes away right now. Father, I rebuke every kind of sickness, every kind of blood pressure, every kind of, 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 of uh, stomach issues, every kind of bone problems, every kind of diabetes, every kind of impurity, every form of infirmity, every migraine headache, I command the headache to come out. I break the power of the headache right now. In the name of Jesus, any food they fed you, I command right now, vomit it right now. In the name of Jesus, every snake spirit, every python spirit, a sign against your marriage, every python spirit, a sign against your business, Come out and die now in the name of Jesus. Break the power of that cobra. We break the power of that power of snakes that are following you. Every snake that watches you in the dream, every snake that is a monitoring spirit watching over your destiny, we destroy its head right now. In the name of Jesus, we suck all those demonic forces from your life right now. And we bring Jesus into your life. Everybody lift up your right hand. Say, Jesus, I belong to you. Say, devil, you are a liar. You don't own my life. Jesus, is the driver of my destiny. From today, I decree my life belongs to Jesus. My money belongs to Jesus. My family belongs to Jesus. Everything about me belongs to Jesus. Nothing belongs to the devil. Therefore, I shield myself with the blood of Jesus I arise from every pit I declare Pharaoh the spirit of Pharaoh dies in the Red Sea he can no longer pursue me he cannot pursue my children he cannot pursue my life he cannot pursue my business he cannot pursue my destiny in the name of Jesus I am set free because of the blood of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. When you're all done, please return to your seat. Many things have happened here. I could see it. Please take the glory. I'm satisfied just to see you glorified. And if you need ministry, this is what a church should be. A church is a clinic. You need ministry, deliverance hour, every Tuesday. Certain things left, all of you. You're going to see. You go back, let those people that uh, you just leave them alone. They will call you. They didn't pay you. They, will, they are going to be troubled by the Spirit of God. You call you. Say, no, I, I got your money. And, and I want to pay back. I want to pay back. That's what is going to happen. Hallelujah. God bless you.